Hey, welcome back to the garage, everyone. Wanted to give you a uh, update here in, in part two of where we are with the cooling system maintenance project for the 300 SD. I just got through washing the front of the engine down. I'll probably do it two or three more times. Sprayed it down with some gunk and uh, just got through spraying it, uh, spraying it down with the water hose here in the shop and got a lot of the grease and grime off looking pretty good. I think a lot of it came from the valve cover gasket. It's leaking. Uh, the car needs a valve job and it needs a new valve cover gasket. I can see a bunch of grease and grime down there on the air conditioning compressor, but believe me, this looks kind of bad, but it looks way better than it did. So one of the things that I did find with the water pump, I decided, as you know, I decided to go ahead and replace the water pump. And lo and behold, guess what we we broke off another bolt uh, this person or the previous owner had the green coolant in this car and I'm assuming we've got a lot of bimetal corrosion that's, that's set up the the water pump is steel the bolt steel and this is aluminum and all that stuff started going on electron exchange and so on and so forth that bolts not coming out I'll have to take this to a machine shop I don't have the proper tools here in my shop to get that out I do have a drill press, but it's not really set up for this. So, what I'm going to—I've already ordered another one of these from eBay, uh, and um, we're going to wait till that comes in, and that's what we're going to do. The thermostat housing—I ordered one of these on e, uh, off of eBay, used, and here it is right here. It looks pretty good. So this will be going on the car, and this is the thermostat top I cleaned it up some that came in with the new with the eBay part I haven't decided whether I'm going to use this one or I'm going to clean up the original one that has the original Mercedes part numbers on it there is a minor difference in the part numbers on this part from my car that's upside down uh, it does say Mercedes Benz and gives the proper part number the only difference is a number eight there and there's some casting marks um, right here that are kind of neat this part that i got in from ebay from a different vehicle it says d plus s above it and there's no casting marks on it that kind of makes me think this was a replacement part or or maybe i don't i'm not sure it it might have been because it it cleaned up really nicely this may have been a parts counter mercedes-benz parts counter uh, part that was put on a car uh, later in its life so I, I'm not sure about that I'm kind of tending I'm kind of think I'm gonna clean up the original one I think I just made up my mind and you and continue to use it because there's nothing wrong with it uh, so waiting on the new uh, water pump housing so that'll be in early next week sometime around the 30th or October the 1st uh, one of the things I did notice uh, looking around on eBay, these aluminum housings from these OM617 engines, there's quite a few of them for sale there on eBay from salvage cars, salvage parts cars. I, I'm thinking this is a, a common issue with bolts breaking off in these, in these uh, parts, both in the thermostat housing and the water pump housing. And I can tell you, you know, these are the bolts that hold this stuff together, right? These little 10 millimeter head bolts, and I'm guessing that's a six millimeter shaft on that. That's, that's kind of chintzy, really. I mean, that's, that's just cheap. I'm not sure what they were thinking when they put that on there. Maybe, I suppose, if they assumed that the person uh, stuck with the service interval and it wouldn't be an issue, um, but who knows? Anyway, uh, I mean, the, the bolts that hold the fan on the engine are bigger than the ones that hold the water pump to the housing and the housing. And now the ones that hold the housing to the block are fine. Uh, of course, these were screwed into, these are steel and they were screwed into iron, so there's really no issue with these bolts. They're in fine condition. Uh, it's the bimetal corrosion between the steel and the aluminum is what comes back to bite you. So I'm, I, you know what, you need, to, you need to run the right coolant in your car. All right, so what's after what seemed like an eternity, I got the new water pump housing, and I have taken my uh, handy-dandy pneumatic uh, 
die grinder sanding disc after it and uh, it was pretty bad off as far as uh, you know white uh, corrosion on the outside so I cleaned it up pretty good this is the back part you'll never see that part uh, it'll be up against the engine but anyway what I'm doing right now is I'm chasing the holes with a uh, with a tap here just to clean up the threads a little bit what we're looking at is a six millimeter bolt hole uh, with a one on the uh, the thread pitch. So I'm going to clean up these bolts, these bolt holes, and get this guy painted. I saw another guy on, a, on another video on YouTube, and he used this uh, Duplicolor cast aluminum parts. Turned out really nice. So it'll uh, simulate the cast aluminum look and uh, I think it'll look really nice after we're done so more on that later all right things are looking up I got a coat of the cast aluminum duplicolor on the salvage water pump housing and I've got two coats on there and that seems to be all we need that is gonna look fantastic on the car I got the key parts uh, taped off with a little blue 3m tape I think up next we're, go we're going to get a little gloss engine black and touch up the front of the block and then we're going to get this guy bolted to the engine all right we've got the front of the engine block isolated i've got my duplicolor high gloss black engine paint ready to go i'm going to use high gloss to make the engine easier to clean because let's be honest it's a diesel and even if you got every single solitary leak fixed it would still get greasy. A high gloss sheen, as you know, is really easy to clean. Uh, if I wanted to gunk it later on, I could just spritz a little gunk on there and wash it off the water and it would come off really easy. If you used a flat black color, your engine would be very difficult to clean. So I'm doing this from a practicality standpoint. So next up, a nice high gloss black engine block. All right, first coat is on and it's looking pretty doggone good. I think I'm going to let this flash over and uh, we'll hit it again and then we'll let it dry and next up we'll put the new water pump housing on the engine. All right, coat number two is on the front of the block. Uh, we taped off a lot of the areas that we didn't want paint on including the, uh, the engine hoist thing there and obviously this uh, port down here where the gasket will be going and we taped off this over here as well where that gasket and the, and the thermostat housing. Uh, we'll go over there and the water pump uh, will connect there. So anyway, this is looking pretty good. Uh, next up, we're going to get this water pump housing on the uh, engine.
All right, just to show you what I'm dealing with here, what you have to do to get this bottom bolt on the water pump housing, you have to get that gap lined up <clears throat> with that bottom bolt right there so that you can get in there with a wrench. I won't be able to get in there with a torque wrench, but I will be able to get in there with a 13 millimeter opened in and closed in wrench. And I can, I can mimic or closely approximate the torque that I'm gonna put on on these guys which is uh, 27 newton meters or about 238 inch pounds okay we just got through tightening down the water pump housing uh, to the block and we attached the water pump to the housing before we did that a water pump to housing uh, torque there is uh, 10 newton meters uh, I forget what the inch pounds is on that I think it's 88 uh, you can google it uh, but this is looking pretty good I think uh, pretty attractive that that cast aluminum paint looks pretty nice in my opinion so up next we're going to be um, assembling and attaching the uh, the thermostat housing all right well here is the uh, thermostat housing to uh, to block and this is the thermostat housing uh, cap right so we had these taped off and we painted them uh, cast aluminum they turned out really nice we're going to get these over to the bench get the tape off and start putting this stuff together All right, according to the factory service manual, for some strange reason, they want the thermostat positioned in here like this, with this part crossways, and of course this being the top, and that goes on the engine. Well, this little rubber seal right here has a groove inside it, and it actually fits on and around the, uh, the thermostat. And uh, this little hole right here goes around this port right here. Well, let's get this thing together. Next thing, we're gonna get this on the car. All right, we've got our gasket on the housing. Uh, we're ready to get this thing on the car. You always wanna position your clamps in a fashion where they're easy to get off next time you need to service the vehicle. So in this case, I'm gonna point these straight out this way towards the passenger side so that if I have to have to come in and take them off, I can grab my wrench and just come straight in like that. Otherwise, you just make headaches for yourself later on down the road. I believe that's got it. Now I need some bolts. Okay, getting that on there was a little bit tricky. You have to contend with lining these bolts up on the thermostat housing and, uh, that connect into the engine block and this small hose down here. And kind of all that gets a little... Uh, discombobulated so it gets a little tricky. I could take the EGR valve off to uh, make this job a little easier but I don't want to. Alright we got the housing, uh, thermostat housing buttoned up there on the engine. I got these torqued down to about 17 or 18 foot pounds. If I see a little seepage here, I'll I'll crank on them a little more. But you know, it's an old car. You you really don't want to, you know. Plus, this is a this is a salvage housing that I bought, you know, from the internet. So uh, I'm going to go easy on it. Alright, up next the uh, banjo bolt connection that goes from the head to the water pump housing. Let me show you what we got here. And it's time for a wrench. All 
I'm telling you, I, I really am beginning to like the looks of the front of this engine after it's been cleaned up and painted and whatnot. I suppose some of the purists might not like it. But uh, I don't really don't care. All right, we got our banjo bolt on. Got that tightened down. Next up is, I think I'm going to get the, uh, the lower radiator hose on now because that one's more of a pain in the butt than the rest. All right, we've reached a stopping point for the evening. We got the upper and lower radiator hoses on the vehicle. Got the thermostat housing on. Got the water pump housing on. Got the water pump on. The heater return hose. The, um, I got it disconnected down there, but the overflow hose. Th those two hoses will be in tomorrow. And then I still need to bolt the fan up and uh, tighten up the uh, belts and get the alternator tightened back down. I'm at a standstill. I can't go any farther until those two hoses come in the mail tomorrow. So I'm uh, this is a good time to quit. More to come later.